All right, guys, KB32 here, check it out. We're sitting over here in the Freedom Studios. I left everything at the house, my camera, everything, so this is gonna be recorded on the phone without any interruption or edits or anything else like that. Color might be off a little bit. Uh, but in any case, uh, don't forget about Bridge the Gap Shop. Look at this thing, I, just a real good look. This is handmade with wood, stained, absolutely gorgeous. You see the back of it. Got a little wire hanging right here. Audra told her I'd help her build her business just by doing a little shout out for it at the beginning of a couple videos. But in any case, uh, I'll put the link down below. Audra, thank you very much for sending this out. But the reason I wanted to do this video, and I haven't done a video for hell, at least a week. Uh, we gotta get back into this swing of things, man. I wanna ask you a question when we first start this video. Uh, should your neighbors know how many or what type of guns you own. Put the link down below, or not a link, but put the comment down below. Uh, interesting article, uh, I think it was Firearm Chronicles. Like he, he keeps posting these things on Instagram and I see those and I do a little research and I get the original article. But it, anyway, this came out uh, in, uh, in, in response to a, I guess a, an, uh, an article that was put in the New York Post or whatever, New York, whatever it was. Should you know if your neighbor owns a gun? Me personally? I can give a crap. I'm that kind of person. I don't really care what you own. I don't care if you own a cannon. I don't give a shit of how many shotguns or whatever else you have. And, and I honestly, uh, I don't feel like it's anybody else's damn business what I own, but I'm gonna read this to you because this is what the liberal left, this is how they think, should your neighbor owns guns. The Withrop case highlights the importance of knowing where and how gun owners obtain a permit. Their whole reason for this whole thing, and I will get into it in a minute, is they are, they feel like they should know how or what the criteria are about how you obtained your permit. And this is the reason why their guys have well, what they want to know. Okay, so let's go on to talk about this thing. Last year, the San Francisco Chronicle submitted a government records request to nearby counties for information about individuals who had applied for and obtained a concealed weapons permit. That's funny because San Francisco, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the journalist's goal was not to expose those individuals, but to understand whether there was patterns in how gun licenses were being given out that might endanger the public. Well, first of all, why is it that a journalist, their goal is to figure out how permits were issued and how they relate to dangers to the public. That, that to me, is just a one-sided argument anyway. You let me know. Under the state law, the counties were legally required to turn over the information. The one county sheriff took to Facebook to alert the public of the request and sent a letter to each permit holder that his office was about to release their personal information to the Chronicle. Could you imagine if the community you lived in, all of a sudden they said, uh, we are going to ban certain f types of firearms, which has happened, Springfield, Illinois. And all of a sudden some, oh, I don't know, uh, journalist goes, well, you know, because the Freedom Act, I can go ahead and get that information. So if they don't come forward, we can go ahead and figure out who has them. Okay. The reporter and the newspaper received threats of violence. Well, no shit. That's what happens when you start clapping and messing with people's guns. So many that the security had to be increased in the newsroom. It's an old story. How do you balance the public's right to know if their neighbors own guns versus gun owners' privacy rights? As far as I'm concerned, uh, my neighbors have zero right to know what I own, regardless of what it is. Firearm? Dildos? I don't know. What the hell? Why is it their right to know what I own and what I don't own? Uh, following the horrific Newtown, Connecticut mass shooting in 2012, a neighboring suburban newspaper in New York tried to give readers that information, publishing an interactive map revealing the names and addresses of handgun permit holders in two counties. But the paper received intense backlash. No kidding. Why would they not? It's absolutely disgusting. And gun advocates successfully pushed for legislation to broadly limit the disclosure of gun ownership records under New York's law. It's disgusting because they go in here and start talking about, well, you know, just because there's an, an other side effect that if people know who owns guns, that might protect them from, oh, I don't know, being robbed. Well, it also exposes these individuals to anyone who needs a gun where you live and how many guns or whatever permits you own. 
So it's no surprise that most states have moved to restrict detailed gun permit records from the public eye. Massachusetts is no exception. Uh, I guess it says it in there. But that's there. Okay, but this is it. This is a case for making uh, at least some gun licensing information public and not so members of the public can keep tabs on guns, but might be in their neighborhood. Last week's apparent hate crime in Winthrop, I guess I'm not sure if it's Winthrop, Massachusetts, Winthrop, North Carolina, where a man armed with two guns shot and killed two people, raises questions about transparency around gun permitting records. The lack of public information about gun permit holders makes it harder to judge how well the police chiefs who issued those permits are using their authority and to hold them accountable when they make the wrong call. There's always the potential for mistakes. But the last time I heard, it is not a journalist's job to hold anyone accountable, especially when it comes to the Second Amendment rights. This is the disgusting part about what journalists think in these names, in this world, in these times. Uh, the shooter, who was gunned down by police, had a license to carry, yet little is known about who made the licensing authority was in this case and how many decisions, how, how the decision was made. Here's another reason why full secrecy may not be a good idea. Gun license applications in the Commonwealth have been on the rise in recent years. This is where they get scared, okay? That's my liberal voice. Seriously. It's not determining any kind of sexual orientation or anything. It's just how I think most liberals talk, okay? Especially those that were in the academic world. In 2020, applications doubled to more than 54,000. More than that, previous two years combined. Massachusetts allows prospective gun owners to apply for six-year license to carry at the local police department where they live and have their place of business. Uh, convicted felons are disqualified. And even after an applicant pays a fee and meets the requirements, such as passing a safety course, local police can still deny the license. That's because there is a measurable flexibility that resides in the local police, a standard suitability built in the process. <laughs> Here's one. In my view, police chiefs have a high level of discretion, said the pol a state representative, David Linsky, who has been involved in gun prevention legislation in Beacon Hill. What is gun prevention legislation? Is it just to prevent you, the homeowner, or anybody else from ever owning a gun? Uh, some departments do extensive social media searches, while others don't, Linsky said. It really does vary from department to department. There's a bit of judgment. But it's not unfettered judgment, said William Brooks, the chief of police of Norwood. In the end, the vast majority of applications are granted. Still, even gun rights advocates themselves sometimes grumble about the mysteries of gun permitting process that's so reliant on an individual chief's decision. And this is true. A uh, chief may not give you a permit to carry or buy a gun because he might not like you. It's bullshit. Uh, Second Amendment shall not be friends. This is the one that chaps my ass. You know what I like to say. Maybe. As with many things around gun control, though, there is a little data to guide us, much less any proof that burglaries would increase if records became publicly available. Think about that. These are jackasses who think it's okay to go ahead and make your public records or your records of what you own as far as a firearm public. Well, why don't we just tell them what kind of abortions you've had in the past, you dumb... F anyway, okay. Clearly, there are some scenarios where public disclosure would be harmful, domestic violence victims, for instance. But it's just as plausible to imagine crooks will be less likely to break into homes if they know the resident is armed. To further protect gun owners' records would also not need to, be in to indicate precisely what kind of firearm a permit holder owns. Guys, this is all a guys. All they want to do is they want to figure out who owns firearms, and that's it but they're trying to figure out a plausible method or a reason to why it is necessary that the public knows what you own. And this is disgusting. So with that being said, uh, we're gonna hopefully do some more videos like this, man. This is actually kind of nice using the phone instead of the big old camera that I normally have to haul around. Anyway, with that being said, let me know what your thoughts are down below. Uh, this afternoon, we're gonna take these guys out. This goes to my CMMG Banshee Mark 9. These are the SMG Dura, uh, what do you call these things? Uh, Dura mag, 33 round mags. Except this time, we're gonna do the rare breeds trigger. Oh yeah, folks. Go to 132, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and have already done so, support the red, white, and blue. God bless America, God bless his men, women in uniform, 24-7 for our freedoms, freedoms not free. 
I'm out of here. Y'all be good.